So in this video, I will be showing- Whoa, 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 hey, 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 get it, get out of here. Get, didn't you read the title? This is just for dream, only for dream. So everybody just gets, just, just click off the video, okay? This is just for dream. It says that this is only for dream, okay? Uh, George, Sapnap, Ant, and even you, bad, bad. I, I see you staying on the video. J this is just a discussion between me and dream, okay? Dream, I, I don't feel safe right now. So uh, dream, just come over here where they won't hear us, okay? So um, in this video, I will be showing you some strategies new ideas and tricks that can help you on your quest to beat the ender dragon okay all right i i, I think they're gone okay i can talk normally now okay Whew. all right let's get started so as of right now you recently had a setback in manhunt you died from instant damage which really stinks i feel for you bro i knew that eventually someone would use them it was just a matter of time and sadly it was ant frost although this is a setback you can still win and learn from this so cutting right to the chase there is no direct counter for potions of harming so it is super difficult to combat the best way you can actually survive is just keeping your distance i know that that sounds really stupid but you act you heard them it is difficult to get a direct hit on you because you are always moving so being stationary at any point when they are close to you is very risky i also found that putting a block between the potion and you does negate the effect a bit it does still damage you it just doesn't damage you as much It'd be so hard to do because you'd never know when they're going to throw it or not. So maybe you could bait them into throwing it or something like that? I don't really know. The other thing to think about is whether they found the fortress or not. If they have, always keep a distance from them. Just pause and think about what you can do. If you kill all of them at least once, then you know for a fact that they won't have any potions after that since they would have to go all the way back to the nether for them. Then you can relax a little bit. Once you kill all of them at least once after the nether, you know that they don't have potions, so killing them or always moving can save you from these devastating harming potions. All right, so another strategy. You probably already knew this, but I was just confirming it. Here's a strategy that could buy you several minutes and may even cost the hunters the entire game. What is the strategy you might ask? I'll show you. Just simply tame a dog and name it Dream and then kill it with lava or something. The hunters would be cheering and they may even throw the game. They could think it's all over and may they might even intentionally kill themselves just to get back to spawn. Seriously, it's not that out of the question. Then you could well be on your way to defeating the Ender Dragon. This isn't a new idea and you probably saw it on Reddit, but yeah, I just I just wanted to let you know. You have already most likely seen this on Reddit also, but if you Ender Pearl up to the nether roof with a weeping vine, you you can clutch on the roof to get away by placing a block underneath you like this. Oh, and by the way, you can do the same thing in the overworld if you find a mountain or something. So it is a great way to get away from your hunters and to keep you from dying as well. Dream, you already did a version of this strat in the one before finale rematch. You made a pitfall trap that went nearly perfect. Oh, just one more step by Ant Frost and it would have been a perfect trap. Now that you already did this, the hunters will always be cautious when in the desert, so you probably will never be able to do this trap ever again. But I have developed a couple other versions that could be just as deadly. The spiral staircase pitfall. Instead of sand, you use gravel so it blends into the walls and doesn't stand out. You can make this as high as you want and they will probably never expect it. You can place lava underneath it to kill the hunters but make sure to give enough block room for the gravel to fall onto it or you could just place signs under the lava so the gravel will break when it hits the signs. For this to be super effective, you must make the lava several blocks deep so they can't just water bucket it. They could also still get out by placing the water on the wall. To prevent that, you could also place stairs on the wall so they can't place water, like this. Another version of the strat is the straight staircase. It has the same principle. Make a staircase of signs and put gravel on top of it. You can make this as big as you want. If you want the lava to be from just one source block, go like this. Make another staircase below the signs. Place the lava on the top block and let it flow then break the blocks under the lava. You should have something like this. Trust me, they'll never see this trap coming. You could also make just a straight tunnel and use the strat as well. With these simple strats, you could probably kill all of them in just one strike. That's insane. Literally, if all four hunters are right there chasing you and you are able to pull this off, dude, it would be another big brain moment. 
People will be, just, just think about it, people will be talking of it for the next two weeks. Not to mention that these traps are so easy to make as well. Alright, so moving away from the traps, <laughs> just kidding, we're just getting started. Say you find a ruined nether portal, and you find an efficiency 3 golden shovel. You can make such a simple splice trap, and you can literally hide it anywhere and still have it be effective. Here's where I put mine, it was just in a dark forest biome, and it could work so well. It is so easy to kill the people behind you. If you didn't already know, golden shovels can insta mine at only efficiency 3, so that means efficiency 4 and efficiency 5 can insta mine it as well. Which means you have a decent chance at finding one in a ruined portal chest. Also, ruined portals are actually pretty common. There can be multiple you come across in each manhunt, which can be very overpowered. I also gotta mention this, that a golden shovel has a 20% chance of spawning in a ruined portal chest, so that's actually a 1 in 5, so it's actually a pretty decent chance that you get one. Other than efficiency, which I just explained, there aren't really any other enchants that are that game breaking, besides the one you've already done. Except Silk Touch, which isn't game breaking, but could be very, very useful. For instance, you can get stones so they can't track you in caves and tunnels. Now, for the memes. Just, just think about this. Just pause and think about this. For the memes. Say to yourself, for the memes. You mine a single diamond ore and place it down in a cave. You somehow lure the hunters in the same cave as you. You could just, I don't know, smelt something. I don't know. Just have them, just lure them into that cave. Then put a trap on the diamond ore. Either another pitfall trap or something like that to meme a hunter. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It will probably be bad boy Halo. <laughs> I mean, he'll be like, ooh, diamonds. And then he'll mine it and then boom, your trap is set off and he dies. It would be hilarious, but you could always use the diamond for an actual advantage. Speaking of ores, get some redstone ore with your fancy silk touch pick and make a trap with that. It would probably have to be in a snow biome to hide it under the snow. If you didn't already know, redstone ore sends out a redstone output when a player just simply walks on it and snow doesn't affect it. So yeah, you could do a pretty savage trap with this concept. I'll leave it to you to make up the killing mechanism. You've probably already heard of this one, but here, here I'll just show you. Yeah, the inevitable, impossible to survive trap. Or is it impossible? No, it is not. It is actually possible to survive from this trap. This goes into a big brain strategy. Start a raid. By starting a raid, you are now committed to this for the next 5 to 10 minutes, which means you have to be far from your hunters. You do not want your hunters to get a totem of undying. That is the only way that you are able to survive from this inevitable trap. So once you have defeated the raid, which only takes 5 to 10 minutes, especially with your skills, you will have several totems of undying. I've gotten up to 5 totems from one raid. And like I said before, it doesn't take that long. I was able to complete my raids averaging at about seven minutes, some being shorter and some being longer, which isn't that much time at all. I wouldn't recommend doing it in a mountain village because those guys are gonna get stuck down there for sure. The problem with this is actually finding a pillager captain. Not all manhunts will have this, but with luck, you are almost guaranteed a win with these totems. Here's another strategy to allow you to get away from your hunters in the nether. It's a little bit risky, but very effective. If you throw an ender pearl in a lava lake, then place a door down, then you are able to sit right there in the lava lake. Then all you need to get out of there is a couple of blocks and a trap door, like this. So that is a very good strategy at distancing yourself from the hunters. All right, enough messing around with these mediocre ideas. I don't know if you've thought about this at all, but here we go. With this weapon, you should be able to outmatch even four hunters. What is this weapon that can slay four super experienced players, you might ask? Well, you see here, there's these things called hacks. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> that, is, that is way out of the question. No, this weapon is truly devastating. The firework or more specifically, a crossbow and firework. A direct hit with this firework will knock out five and a half hearts of damage 
with full iron armor. Not to mention it can attack multiple targets at once. Combine that with quick charge and multi-shot and you are an unstoppable killing machine. Also, you can have several crossbows locked and loaded at any time. All it takes is two iron, four string, and a little bit of wood to make two crossbows. It's literally nothing. The fireworks themselves aren't that cheap to make, but in one night on a random world, I got 32 gunpowder and 28 sugarcane right off the bat, which is enough for 12 of these deadly fireworks. Now that doesn't sound like much, but if only two fireworks needs to kill them, they could all be killed very quickly with less than 12 fireworks. Not to mention that you can find tons of gunpowder in temples. Also, if you get a looting sword, oh, you'd be set you'd be set for the entire game. They'd basically just give you the win. But seriously, 10 minutes of running around and you already have yourself an incredible weapon of mass destruction. Say that that's not overpowered. This is how you actually create the fireworks. Boom, I have just given you a bunch of strategies for Manhunt Dream and I challenge you to use some of them. Hold on, hold on, hold on, don't leave yet. I still have some tips for you. Tip number one, please, please burn the hunter's items. There have been so many times they have just gotten their items back after being killed. So please barbecue them. Tip number two, use the fishing rod more often. It is crazy overpowered. You use it in one manhunt and then in the next, what, two, three? You didn't use it at all. You should use that more often. It is seriously overpowered. Tip number three, you probably already do this, but find seeds that are good and find some that can favor your strategies. And finally, tip number four. Keep being amazing, bro. You are doing you are doing phenomenal. Hope this has helped you out, Dream. I hope that this video has brought new light some ideas and strategies that you haven't thought of before, and I hope this wins you a manhunt. And those of you who are not Dream and still decided to watch this video, I know where you live. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a happy new year. I'm your host, Shadow Mage, and I'll see y'all next time.